Ohio. Welcome to Otaku Talk. It's me, your boy, your host, OD. And today we'll be reviewing and analyzing chapter 1067 of One Piece. Kind of interesting chapter. Um, it was good. I, I don't know why I paused there. It was a good chapter. Uh, pace was slowed down a little bit from what we've been getting, but still great chapter, more lore, more exposition given. So can't wait to get into it. If you haven't been here before or have, but haven't done so already, would greatly appreciate it. If you could do your boy a solid like, share, subscribe would mean the absolute world to me. Anyway, without much further ado, let's get into this review. All right, so chapter 1067 of One Piece, Punk Record. Oh. This won't be a long review, but there are a couple things I want to touch on, so we'll get to it. First things first, the cover story. You know I love those. You know I think those are an intricate part of One Piece. And so we have uh, Judge Vinsmoke and Caesar Clown butting heads. Apparently someone is pretending they don't know the other person i'm going to assume it's judge and they are just at odds obviously i think it's very apparent that they're going to squash things and eventually work together but this was kind of a really funny clash you have the rest of the vin smoke siblings in the back just watching them fight so very interesting i'm very curious to see where this cover story uh goes from here uh another thing um speaking of like this cover story and things that have been happening you know, this whole cover story has been taking place, you know, sometime around the time the Straw Hats left, um, what's it called, Totland or what have you, Whole Cake. And something that really bothered me in that film Red movie was the fact that, like, Big Mom was involved and certain people that, like, should otherwise be occupied were involved. So, I don't know. I'm thinking about doing a video. I say that all the time. We'll see if I get to it. but. um film red was an enjoyable movie but there were a lot of aspects that i did not like about it so maybe i'll get it uh, oda once again leaves a little note for us once again my brain is just like okay oda like what does any of this mean or if you're just you know trying to reach out trying to talk to your fans i totally get it but it was kind of weird to me how he rejected the idea of like some of the songs or i forget what exactly he said uh, being on the uh, special Blu-ray release, but you can see them on like YouTube. So I don't know if that was a move to make it more accessible to fans or what, but like. So anyway, uh, we start off this chapter and we learn immediately more about Vegapunk and we learn some questions that, you know, we were asking earlier. And one of the biggest things is Vegapunk does indeed have a devil fruit. Now. Oh no god no god please no 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 we find out that vegapunk has the brain brain fruit i had initial problems with this and i definitely see this being a point of contention in the community uh let's be real I think a lot of us, maybe I'm just speaking for myself, but I really, really didn't want Vegapunk to have any Devil Fruit abilities. I really would have just enjoyed if he was just naturally smart, a born genius, someone that worked hard. Um, we've been seeing more and more in this series the lack of um, just naturally talented or naturally quirky characters. We had the likes of, you know, Django, Miss Golden Week, and, you know, countless other characters in the very beginning of the series that had these really weird awkward powers that weren't derived from devil fruits they were just powers that were either you know inherent or native to the individual or you know their species and stuff like that and that was something i really liked i know this is a story where you know it heavily revolves around devil fruits but i've never felt like everything has to be devil fruits everything doesn't have to be devil fruits everything doesn't have to be hockey things are allowed to be quirky and you know unique and so this was kind of a you know flow for me but Oda immediately does what I consider damage control, and he elaborates with the fact that 
the brain brain devil fruit simply allows him to have a super eidetic memory like it's like eidetic memory times infinity because it essentially allows him to store infinite amounts of knowledge so it kind of made me take the medicine a little bit better because it's not like the devil fruit made vegapunk smart it is very clearly established that vegapunk is smart on his own all this devil fruit does is allow him to maximize that intelligence by being able to you know hold and retain knowledge which at, in my opinion at its core is actually what makes someone smart um you know i'm someone that studied biology and i will tell you right now if my memory was as good as vegapunk i would be a much better like i would have my degree let's just say that i would be able to re remember all the chemical formulas all the rules all the interactions and what have you when it came to chemistry so i acknowledge that he's smart but i don't know i feel like this takes a little bit away from him nonetheless well i think this is like make or break does this ruin the character of vegapunk for me absolutely not it just i would have really liked it if it was just some kind of unique quirky thing where vegapunk as an individual was just so smart that like his brain was just able to like grow outside of the you know standard growth of a human being but i digress this is the way oda decided to go with it and once again it isn't the end of the world it is a pretty interesting twist that you know i can't be too upset about so yeah he goes on to tell us that you know he cut out his own brain and he placed it in the punk records which is super interesting Initially, I thought Punk Records was going to have to do something with music, obviously. And we know Oda isn't the type of person to, you know, you know, he loves misdirection. So, totally got that. I did think Punk Records might have some kind of connection to, you know, kid with all kids punk moves. And, you know, I am privy to the idea that, you know, there is some kind of relationship between Vega Punk and kid because of, you know, the whole punk theme. We'll see. I still haven't given up on that. But this isn't that. So long story short, he stores his brain in the uh, punk records section of Egghead Island, right? I originally thought that some way or somehow he took his brain and either placed it individually into the satellites or he did something even cooler and did some kind of, you know, futuristic or ancient tech kind of thing where he was able to download his brain like digitize his brain and then disseminate it into the clones we find out that's not the case and so we find out the reason he did this was one brain was getting way too big it was getting outlandish how big his brain was brain was also you know each individual that he put his brain into exhibits a different part of his personality and when put together you get the full range of his personality however you lose the capability of the workload that they do so I love the way he explains that each of the clones are a specialist in a different field of science. So I thought that was super cool. Um, I hope that they go on to elaborate which branches because I kind of figured like they were all smart to a certain degree. But, you know, instead of being specialists in certain degrees, they were specialists in aspects of, you know, science. Uh, basically, like how I was saying in my other review, how... Um, the flare, the flare satellite comes up with ideas. Uh, the P Pythagoras one, he does all the wisdom one, does all the you know calculations and stuff like that. I thought that's how they broke that up. I'm still very interested in how they're all able to like eat and poop and all that stuff via um what's the last one York York satellite. But hopefully we'll get that explained to us later because honestly, Oda seems to be on the path to explain any and all things to us and said that all of our questions about Del Fruit and stuff are going to be answered through the introduction of Vegapunk. So at this you know, point in time, that is what I am looking forward to the most. So we find out some more information about you know, his plans for punk records. Basically, he wants to make base, like a giant universal library where everyone is able to upload their all their collective knowledge and then are and then you know people are able to access that collective knowledge and disseminate it and honestly i like that of all the characters in one piece he probably has one of my top 3 dreams slash goals because you know one of my biggest things that has been, that has pissed me off in life is you know how restrictive the access to information is 
Now, I know what you're thinking. What we have Google, and I agree. I think it is great that we have, you know, the internet, we have Google, we have Reddit, we have forums, we have all these things. There are many ways to bootleg textbooks. You have all these things where, you know, people can access information, and I think that is incredible. But there is information is still get uh, gate kept. Um, you know, you have universities. Uh, we don't have a system in place, or at least not that I know of, where someone can do their own self-independent study and research and get a degree based on their own self-taught like knowledge and accreditation. Like I thought that would be super cool if you know someone could you know take their own courses, teach themselves stuff, and then go to some kind of university, take a test that says, "Yeah, I know this shit. I got it." So that was really interesting. Um, Topper was really really interested he was like i could learn so much about medicine i'm wondering if some way somehow he'll be given access to that as well so um we find out that the apple on Vega Punk's head is actually an antenna that relays information and allows him to upload uh you know data and download data from uh the punk record or at least that's how i interpret it, right so um i want to learn more about that i also want to learn more about the fact that like there's a massive gap so what happens like when it rains when things happen does anything get into his head stuff like that um we also learned that all of the satellites have the ability to uh synchronize to essentially uh the punk record cloud so immediately i went to like the main thing i used to synchronize all the time and that's like my itunes library with my ipod and stuff haven't done that in forever but that was the first thing that came to mind still a little bit confused why there seems to be like a lack of information between all of them especially with the fact that vega punk was originally trying to um you know was excited to meet up with luffy and so you know the welcome that lilith gave was kind of weird but once again lilith does have you know different schemes and goals than vegapunk i actually thought for a second when jory bonnie went to attack uh vegapunk it was actually lilith for a second so that kind of uh confused and like flushed me right so anyway um jory bonnie is not having it she's irate she's upset calling him all types of names saying he's selfish of course he only cares about xyz and to be honest big punk understands you know he's the one that turned puma into a cyborg and i would bet any amount of berries that this was intentional that maybe kuma asked for it that this was in some way shape or form some means or method of protecting jewelry bonnie right um anyway jewelry bonnie is not having it she pulls out her uh lightsaber i'm just gonna call it a lightsaber we all know what it is know when you're the first person to quote unquote create something like everything is that like i'm nigerian and so like all vacuums are called hoovers and like uh when you want to mop the floor you you know swiffer we just use like the main thing as a noun for whatever we're talking about right and so um you know luffy's like you need to apologize to her all this stuff and vegapunk's freaking out but he also tells her the lightsaber is a failure she's like it's not a light it's not a failure i've used it before it definitely works however for him he considers it a failure because it attracts bugs of course we're learning more about vegapunk's personality his quirks and this totally seems you know up to par with him right and i was, I was like that's not a failure that's dumb like we bugs have always naturally been attracted to light so no matter what any kind of light type you know system is going to attract bugs Anyway, I don't know if these bugs were particularly strong or if, you know, Jory Bonnie has some kind of aversion to insects, but she immediately, I think after, you know, the bugs are attracted to the light and get rightfully, you know, bug zapped by them, essentially, she passes out and faints. I'm not even sure if it was before that or if it's when like Luffy shows her the stag beetle, right? But she's down and out for the count. And we kind of get some kind of vague mystery that like Vegapunk did something to her. Now, I think, you know, Occam's Razor, the easiest thing to assume is the thing he did to her was turn her dad into a cyborg. Duh, obvious, right? But part of me thinks it might be something else. Maybe he's the one that gave her the, uh, you know, the aging devil fruit. I for, honestly, I forget what the hell her devil fruit's name is, but the one that gave her her devil fruit, maybe that was him. Another idea I had was maybe he's responsible for her big appetite. Maybe he messed with her physiology, her lineage factor, and he is the sole reason why she has like the like hunger pangs. Now, maybe it's just her being a normal character. There are many characters in this series that like to eat. Her. So maybe it just simply has something to do with that, but who knows? 
Okay, so I actually misremembered this part when I was doing my actual review. It's not that Vegapunk gave her something. He has something he has to give her. So obviously that completely changes my entire interpretation of this scene. And obviously it's one of two things. I'm guessing that Kuma either gave him specific memories or like a message that he wished to convey to Jory Bonnie if say she ever found Vegapunk and you know wanted to figure out like why he did what he did etc cetera, etc cetera. you know Kuma left a message for her or Vegapunk has his memory kind of stored or backed up and you know he gives that to Jory Bonnie in order to return Kuma back to the so it's definitely one of those two things in my opinion Anyway, we learn more about this robot and we find out that it's not a creation of Vegapunks himself. It is also another ancient artifact that was discovered by other scientists predating Dr. Vegapunk. Actually, this thing has been around since, well, obviously it's been around since the Void Century, right? But it was active most recently about 100 years ago during the, uh, you know, uh, Fishman, Peach or whatever, when the government decided, hey, we're no longer going to you know, treat you guys as less than, but we know that you know that didn't quite go up to. Also, something very impressive we learned is that this robot actually scaled the red line, which we know is a tremendous feat that I can only recall being done by Fisher Tiger. So that's really, really important. Um, what I that answer that that proposes a bunch of questions like, why did it do that? What is its uh, directive? Who gave it that directive? What was it trying to do? So I'm very curious as to the information we'll get on that. On top of that, we learned that it, um, the technology from that robot is the technology that he used to make uh, Vega Force One, which I was interested in because why specifically Vega Force One? Because I couldn't tell if, you know, Shaco was a robot or like a human clone. I can't tell what any of these were. But I always kind of assumed that, you know, Pythagoras and Flair were also kind of built along this method as well. but. Who the hell knows? Okay, I'm screwing up today because we have another boo-boo. All right, so apparently, not apparently, I miss I misremembered this part too. So Vega Force One isn't uh you know the isn't Satellite One. I believe Vega for um Vega Force One are the is the giant robot that initially brought the Straw Hats onto Eggman Island. So he's talking about that, which makes a lot more sense. Okay, so I'm messing up. Also, something I didn't talk about in my original review is that apparently this robot has some kind of crazy power source that sustains it that he was unable to replicate. So that brings me back to what Lilith was talking about, about, you know, exploring with alternate uh, energy as well as trying to create her own sun. Anyway, uh, we have CP0 finally showing up. Honestly, it's kind of bittersweet for me because I'm very excited to see Rob Lucci again. Very ex excited to see, you know, how he's grown, how he's potentially changed or say, stayed the same. And, you know, if he's gotten any stronger. However, I just don't know how I feel about the stakes because there's just no way in hell, in my personal opinion, that he could stand up to the current Luffy, let alone Boro or Sanji. Like, I feel like all we have to do at this point is send, like, Jinbei at him. Which, for some of you, the power scaling on whether or not Jinbei is stronger than Sanji is still, you know, out for a vote. So, who knows? But, like, just, he's completely out of, like, Luffy is completely out of his, rank, uh, like, his league. So, I don't see any kind of threat from this happening. So, I know Oda is very intentional. So, I can't wait to see the purpose behind this, right? Anyway, Shaka, um, the CP0 are trying to board. They're being attacked by the mechanized sea beast. And they're requesting permission to, you know, board Eggman. Shaka says, hell no, you're not about to board us. We know that you're here to assassinate us. So how about this? Leave the Seraphim and go. Honestly, ridiculous request from the, uh, you know, satellite that's supposed to be logic. But hey, I like the energy. I fucks with it. But no, that's definitely not what's going to happen. So they're definitely going to take out these mechanized CB. I don't think that's going to be a problem. I think for anyone that, you know, can hold their weight combat wise, these aren't going to be an they're going to board so we'll see what will happen from here once again i definitely think that they're prepared but also i don't know if they do they know that the straw hats are here i forget i forget but like if, if they don't know the straw hats are here they're in for a rude 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 awakening it would be hilarious kind of like uh 
the spring dude i forget his name uh the hyena dude uh if you know luffy just you know one shots him and he, you know he's just out for the count right also something i totally forgot to mention that was super important in this chapter is Vegapunk asked Luffy to take him off of Egghead. And I was thinking to myself, okay, where would he want the Straw Hats to take him? My first thought was, you know, they got to go to Elbaf next. And Elbaf has this tremendous library of knowledge. But, you know, Vegapunk's already read all the books there. So, like, that wouldn't make any sense. He has nothing to really gain there. So then I thought to myself, okay, maybe he could rectify, you know, past wrongs and join the revolutionaries. You know, he has a solid uh, foundation with dragon he was literally just talking to dragon like not even like a chapter or two right kuma's there so he could help you know restore kuma to normal maybe possibly if it is possible restore his memory and you know join the revolutionaries which is something that he really actually did want to do just didn't have just you know his research and stuff was more important to him at the time but now you know he's researched so much so now, now would be the best time for that who knows so um so yeah, also I'm very curious about what would happen with, you know, Egghead Island itself and Punk Record. It doesn't seem mobile, doesn't seem like something he could just take with him. So wouldn't that be kind of dangerous to leave all that knowledge, essentially his brain there? So yeah, very curious as to like what the idea there is. Other is setting off the real Kuma over in Kamabaka Island, I believe that's what it's called. And he is while it like in the midst of being like repaired and fixed he immediately just starts rushing he's trying to get to something the rest of his you know nakama have no clue what's going on dragon's freaking out ivanka's freaking out everyone's freaking out like what is it you are trying to get to and my only theories are one you know the seraphim is there he uh is uh like hearing and relaying like all the information uh somehow they're connected maybe through their lineage factor um we we know that you know lineage factor is able to inherit you know will feelings thoughts abilities and stuff like that so maybe in some way shape or form similar to how vegapunk is connected with satellites you know kuma is connected to the passive feet and knows that either harm is going to be um you know fall vegapunk or harm is going to be fall his daughter so i'm very very curious about you know what information we there but um all in all i think that's all i have to say about this chapter this was very interesting every single chapter we've been getting has just been giving us loads and loads and loads of information exposition and you know you guys know me i love exposition i'm here for it can't wait to see what happens next chapter i think based upon the pace of how things have been going we're definitely going to see you know a confrontation between the straw hats and zero by next chapter if not by next chapter two chapters definitely but i see it coming next anyway guys i'm gonna leave here because my camera's acting up does that but let me know what you guys thought about this chapter let me know if there's anything important that was you know revealed that i missed that i didn't discuss and uh let me know how you guys feel about dr vegapunk having a uh, brain brain fruit does it ruin it for you do you not care do you still enjoy it etc et anyway this has been otaku talk um I'm boy od please make sure to like share and subscribe and great weekend Take care, guys Thank you.